From LEX 18, your official UK sports station for Big Blue Nation, this is BBN Tonight. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. I hope to continue the same style of basketball and will certainly take advantage of Coach Rupp's offer to me for future advice and counsel. Every time I ever represented the university, even on the road or here at home, with one of my teams, the star of that game, I remembered my first trip out on that floor. And I think I had the same sensation when the band played on on UFK that I had that first night. And that was a great feeling. Basketball is like a game of life. You have to have character to win it. And uh, that's the biggest compliment I could pay these guys. I'm proud of them. I respect them. I love every one of them as I have every player I've ever coached. We lost an icon of Kentucky basketball Saturday morning. Joe B. Hall passed away at the age of 93. Coach Hall led Kentucky to 297 wins in 13 seasons and won Kentucky's fifth national title in 1978, as well as Final Fours in 1975 and 1984. Along with his success on the court, Coach Hall will be remembered for his love of Kentucky, remaining a fixture at home basketball games and an active member of the community long after his retirement. His impact outside of basketball was just as important as his time on the court. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Tarullo. And I'm Josh Berry. And Keith Farmer has the day off. Of course, paying tribute to Coach Joe B. Hall. You'll hear from some of his former players in a minute, as well as the voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach. That's right. And the game we saw Saturday night was exactly what Coach Hall would have wanted. A complete and total beatdown of the Tennessee Volunteers. That's tonight's Big Blue story presented by CHI St. Joseph Health. Kentucky controlled the game from the start. The Cats were leading 12 to 5 and shooting 100% by the first TV timeout. Of course, they couldn't shoot 100% all night, Anna, but it was pretty <laughs> close. 79% from the floor in the first half, leading 52 to 38 at halftime, and they held on strong in the second half. The Cats outscored the Vols 55 to 41 after the break, and at one point they even led by 32 points. Just an all-around efficient performance from this offense. 27 fast break points. Four guards scored in double figures, led by Ty Ty Washington with 28 points, followed by Wheeler with 21, Brady with 16, and Mintz with 10. All against the Tennessee defense that was previously ranked second in the country mm -hmm. and on average had allowed just 61 points per game. And Kentucky, as you know, they put up 107. We got a ways to go, but this was a step. And, and look, I thought Tennessee played well offensively. They did some good stuff. Scored a lot of points. Some of them at the end, but don't even take that. They still scored more than they had against other teams in our league. But we were so good offensively, passing it, extra plays. They stretched out their defense, and we're a driving shoot floater kind of team. That's what we are. And it kind of uh, worked in our favor. Josh, it was the first time any team had scored 100 against Tennessee in 15 years. That's an incredible stat, but it, it may be just me, but it, I'm not really surprised. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of what we expected with the reload of talent on mm -hmm. this roster. Sabir sure. and Ty Ty kind of controlling the game yeah. with the ball handling. You have Mintz as well as Kellen Grady shooting from the outside, stretching the floor. And then, of course, down yep. in the post, you have Oscar Shibway dominating the as man, he always the machine. does. All of it coming in front of the biggest home crowd of the season, 20,278 strong inside of Rupp Arena. BBN was loud, and the players certainly noticed. That was crazy. That was one of the best, probably the best experience I done had. Um, that up there with the Madison Square Garden, just when we made that initial run to begin the game, you know, I was, my ears were like popping. I'm like, yo, this is loud. The crowd, you know, they came in with a lot of intensity. And I just felt like we played, we matched their intensity. They, you know, like majority of the game, they were standing up screaming. So like we could just feel how electrifying it was to not only myself, but to everybody on the team. You know, it just gives us a real confidence boost knowing that we got a fan base behind us that believes in us. Now much more on the game itself in just a few minutes, but first we want to continue to pay tribute to Joe B. Hall. Our Keith Farmer put together this story honoring the life of the legendary coach. 
He lived the life that many young Kentuckians hope to have. Joe B. Hall grew up in Cynthiana, had the chance to wear the blue and white where he won a national championship as a player in 1949. He would later return as a young assistant under his legendary coach, Adolph Rupp, where the Wildcats were runners-up in 1966. I learned uh, organization, uh, how to build inter-squad competition. I learned uh, a whole lot about X and O's and more about do's and don'ts. Finally, he was elevated to head coach in 1972. Mike Pratt, who played at UK when Coach Hall was an assistant, says he was the right man to take on the tough task of taking over the seat held by Rupp because he knew what the program meant to him, to the former players, to all the fans. He knew what the program meant. I don't think anybody else could have followed uh, Coach Rupp except Joby. Coach Hall led Kentucky to three Final Fours in 1975, 1978, and 1984, with the 78 national title coming home to Lexington, the fifth in the program's history. Jack Goose Givens led UK with 41 points as the Wildcats knocked off Duke 94-88 to finish off a 30-2 season. There are just very few moments that give you that satisfaction, that uh, joy, that appreciation. Coach Hall is also known for not only integrating Kentucky basketball, but also the sidelines, bringing in the first African-American coach to UK with assistant Leonard Hamilton. He recruited James and I hard. He recruited Larry and Marion Haskins and Reggie Warford. He recruited us very hard. He brought in Leonard Hamilton, who really did a great job of going into areas where Kentucky had not gone into before. In 1985, Coach Hall surprised a lot of the Commonwealth with his abrupt retirement. He would go on to co-host a radio show with Denny Crum, the coach of the Wildcats' in-state rival, Louisville. But post-coaching also gave Coach Hall a chance to connect with his players on a different level. We formed a friendship, more than just a player-coach relationship, but a friendship that enabled us to share and to spend time together and to not even talk about basketball. Being a father figure, being a role model, uh, just an ambassador. Coach Calipari grew to have a terrific relationship with the former UK coach. Hall would come to practices and try and talk Coach Cal into using a 1-3-1 defense. He did that in the win over Tennessee while also using a rolled up program like Hall always did on the sidelines. This was a celebration for Coach Hall. The rolled up program which um, I will bring out to every game this year to finish it out.